Uh, our next unknown is unknown number four. So if you can kind of tell a little bit of a tint to that uh, substance, that make observations in terms of physical state. Okay, and again, I've got that in a, a clean test tube. So now what I want to do, I'm going to go through and do some solubility tests. I'm going to test with water, and then if I need to, we can go further. So I've got uh, water in a test tube, and then I'm going to go add some of my unknown to that. I'm going to let that sit a second. I think you can see that there's some oil droplets, if you can see that, there's some oil droplets. It looks like there's a thin layer at the bottom of the test tube. I'm just going to add, and you can kind of tell too, if, I, if you focus your attention on this part, and then I'm just going to add some more drops of this and see if they go down. You notice how they're going down to the bottom? Then, no matter if I shake this up or stir it, then all of those are going to the bottom, so we know that this substance is not soluble in water. So therefore, if we go back to the solubility chart, then the next thing we want to try is it soluble in sodium hydroxide solution. Then we'll move up to the hydrochloric acid and then sulfuric if we need to go that far. So I've got some of the 1.5 molar sodium hydroxide. I'm going to take my sample, some of my sample and add to that. And I think you can tell when I stir that, you can kind of see the droplets and then they're going to form two layers. This is what I was referring to earlier, is that if you add a couple drops of your unknown to that, it may be very difficult to tell if it is the meniscus or a, a layer. So it doesn't hurt anything to go back and add more drops to see if that meniscus gets bigger, then it's not the meniscus, it's that layer that's insoluble. So we know it's not soluble in sodium hydroxide, so now we have to move to the hydrochloric acid solution. So I've got some hydrochloric acid here. I'm going to add to that some of my unknown. And again, you can kind of see, I probably wouldn't shake these a lot without some type of stopper on since they're caustic acid and bases. Uh, so I probably would use a stirring rod for that. But you can tell, you can see how it, the, the unknown is kind of forming these um, oil droplets, if you will, at the bottom that you see. So again, we know it's not soluble in the hydrochloric acid. So by looking at the solubility chart, the last place we go is going to be sulfuric acid. So I have some sulfuric acid in a test tube. To that, I'm going to add some of my unknown. And again, I'm going to stir this with the stirring rod. And if you notice, sometimes it may get a little warm when you use the sulfuric acid. I'm not really noticing a temperature change with the sulfuric acid, but if it did get warmer, it's not unusual. But notice, we only have one layer that's formed, but it did turn that kind of yellowish color. That's kind of characteristic of this uh, solubility test. So make note of that, but you're not going to do anything with it, if you will. What we're looking at is solubility only. So there's no two layers there. So now, if I know that it's soluble in sulfuric acid, this is where knowing the solubility can greatly reduce the number of chemical tests you do. You just don't want to start grabbing every bottle and start testing it. So if it is soluble in sulfuric acid, it could either be a higher molecular weight alcohol. It could be an aldehyde that's higher molecular weight because it didn't dissolve in water. It could be a ketone, higher molecular weight. It could have been an ester. It could have been a high molecular weight carboxylic acid, amide, high molecular weight amine. So it could be any of those classes. So what we want to do, probably one of the first places to start is to rule out an alcohol. That's the reason we kind of like to use the uh, cyric nitrate solution. And then we'll go further from there. So we're kind of narrowing it down. Now, earlier we said we're not using amides or esters, so those we can rule out. But the chemical test we use, 
hopefully we'll kind of narrow down what class of compounds we have. So we're, we just decided that uh, we've kind of narrowed down some classes of which are unknown uh, could be. So first test we're going to do next after the solubility is the seric nitrate test. Uh, this is my kind of blank sample if you will. So I'm going to take some of the seric nitrate solution. So there's our seric nitrate solution, and then I'm going to add a few drops of my unknown, and then we'll see if anything happens. No, we're really not seeing any red color there. It still has kind of the same color. So we would say that would be a negative test for the seric nitrate. So what does that rule out? So think about that. So after the seric nitrate test, we're going to use the chromic acid. Here's my chromic acid solution. And then I've got some acetone here. I'm going to take some of my sample and just add that to the acetone. Swirl that to dissolve. And then I'm going to add a couple drops of the chromic acid reagent. I'm going to let that sit. I think you can see that there is a difference. Oh yes, you can definitely see it now. So notice that the orange color has disappeared. I'm just going to hold this out a little bit. Orange color has disappeared and there is a greenish precipitate in the bottom. So chromic acid test is positive. So what does that tell us between um, what we saw for the seric nitrate test versus what we saw for the chromic acid? So we know we have something that can be oxidized from the, ser from the chromic acid test. So the next test we're going to do is the 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine test, the 2,4-DNP. So the solvent that we use for that is ethanol. So both of these test tubes only contain ethanol. So what I'm going to do to that is add four blanks just so we have something to compare it to. Here is our 2,4-DNP solution. And remember, there's nothing in that except the reagent and the uh, solvent. Here's the solvent. I'm going to add some of my unknown to that. And then notice we formed a instantaneous, we formed a precipitate. And this has kind of a yellowish color. So we've got a yellow precipitate for the 2,4-DNP. Remember the 2,4-DNP test is positive for aldehydes or ketones. So think about what we've seen so far in terms of narrowing it down. And then the next reagent we're going to, or the next chemical test we're going to do is the iodoform test. For the iodoform test, what the iodoform test picks up, as we mentioned before, is methyl groups that's next door to a carbonyl group or next door to an alcohol that could be oxidized to a carbonyl group. So we have uh, water here. Uh, we're going to dissolve our sample or put our sample in water. Uh, we may have to add another chemical to dissolve it, which I've got already in here because remember before we saw that this compound is not water soluble, so I went ahead and added that chemical to it. Um, we've got our sodium hydroxide solution, and then we've got our uh, odoform iodine uh, reagent. So I'm going to take my sample and add some of that. Now since we've got more probably room, I need more room than what's in these, I'm just going to go ahead and transfer this to a larger test tube. So this is my sample that's been dissolved in water. I'm going to add to that the sodium hydroxide solution. And then to that, I'm going to, and I'm going to just kind of give that a quick stir. And then to that, I'm going to add our uh, iodine solution. Notice that uh, although the brownish color uh, is not as concentrated as it was, that could be due to maybe a little bit lesser concentration of the iodine potassium iodide solution. But notice we did not see a yellow precipitate. So if the odoform is positive, you've got to see a yellow precipitate, and we're not. 
What does the yellow precipitate mean? We've got a methyl group right next door to a carbonyl group of either an aldehyde or a ketone, or it could be a methyl group next to an alcohol that could be oxidized to an aldehyde or ketone. And then the last test we're gonna do is the Tollins test. Um, what I've added to this particular test tube is the Tollins reagent which is a mixture of sodium, excuse me, silver nitrate, uh, sodium hydroxide, and ammonia. Have a few milliliters of our um, Tollins reagent. To that, I'm gonna add some of our unknown. Ah! Can you see the silver, the mirror that's forming on the side of the test tube? Perfect. And remember the Tollins test is if you see the silver mirror then that's indicative of an aldehyde group.